OSHA 1910.331 subpart A. You gotta be kidding me. Definitions, requirements, what are and aren't considered safe working conditions. It's not easy staying on top of all this stuff. My safety supervisor gave me an overview of the 70E electrical safety training seminar he attended last month. A lot of it went right over my head. If those comments seem familiar, you're not alone. The standards and regulations can sound complicated, and there are a lot of them. So let's try to break things down. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, is part of the United States Department of Labor. When we're talking about how OSHA applies to electrical safety, there are OSHA regulations that spell out accepted requirements for general industry and construction. It's federal law. Another regulation is OSHA's Personal Protective Equipment Standard. It means that employers must protect their employees from electrical hazards. It, too, is a law. The National Fire Protection Association has written a very detailed document called the Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace, commonly known as NFPA 70E. OSHA enforces federal laws regarding worker safety and uses NFPA 70E as a guide for the specific methods that must be used to protect workers from electrical hazards. 70E spells out the requirements for safe work practices, administrative controls, and personal protective equipment. And you may think, what's the big deal? Maybe your company's electrical safety program doesn't follow 70E to a T, but it seems like it's good enough. Since you've been on the job, there hasn't been a single incident. The big deal is that your company's electrical safety program needs to follow the guidelines specified by OSHA and NFPA 70E. It's not just a good idea. It's the right thing to do from a legal standpoint, and it makes good business sense. These are standards and regulations that you must follow, that you need to know. They're intended to provide for a safe work environment and dictate safe work practices to help protect your employees from electrical hazards. Okay, so you're pretty confident that your safety program has just about all that covered. But is being pretty confident enough when your employee's life is on the line? You're pretty sure he's been given the proper training, tools, and protective equipment to do the work safely, but is it enough? Or is today the day that the unthinkable happens? How do you know? The Electrical Safety Foundation International understands how overwhelming the standards and regulations can seem. So they've created an easy-to-use self-assessment tool that will help you understand how they affect you. The self-assessment questions focus on three distinct areas, facilities, personnel, and procedures. Under facilities, you'll be evaluating company policies and systems for equipment maintenance, tools, repairs, testing, clearance limits, and safe working conditions. Are your equipment and facilities in full compliance with OSHA and NFPA 70E electrical safety requirements? Your company has one-line diagrams for all power systems, doesn't it? Are the insulated tools inspected for damage before they are used? How do you know? What about maintenance and repair of equipment and tools? The ESFI Online Electrical Safety Self-Assessment will ask you to consider these issues and many more. As you answer the questions in the assessment, you'll be able to identify areas of your facilities that may require attention. The questions are great. I use them like a checklist for my electrical safety program. Under personnel, the self-assessment will help to focus your attention on the actual work practices of your employees, the proper care and use of the PPE, employee training and continuing education, You'll review the definitions of qualified and unqualified persons and examine workforce preparedness. Have your employees been trained in the proper use of the personal protective equipment? Is all PPE tested per ASTM? Is it appropriate and rated for the electrical hazards of the job? How do you know? For all those employees involved in electrical work, are they receiving sufficient training for the tasks they are required to perform? These are just a few of the questions you'll find as you use this online resource. I like that the self-assessment helps me think through all the different aspects involved in making sure we're in compliance with standards and regulations. The last area of interest is procedures. In this section, 
you will examine procedures for performing energized work, de-energizing and re-energizing, for lockout, tagout, for job planning, for conducting arc flash hazard analysis, for reporting safety concerns and record keeping. Does your electrical safety program make de-energization a priority? How do you know that a job can be performed safely? You know when your job briefing addresses the potential hazards, the proper work procedures, special precautions that need to be taken, energy source controls, and of course, PPE. We cover a lot of information at our job briefings. My safety supervisor is very thorough. All my questions are answered before I set out to do the work. What about conducting a thorough arc flash hazard analysis? When did you last update the arc flash hazard analysis for your facility? Have arc flash warning labels been installed on all electrical equipment that requires them? There is a lot you need to know. You must conduct thorough audits and reviews periodically to gather critical information and make sure everything is kept up to date. Compile as much information as you can and ask questions. Lots of questions. This is how you can go to work in the morning knowing that you've done everything possible to minimize the potential risks for everyone at your facility who works on or around energized equipment. The ESFI Online Electrical Safety Self-Assessment. This is how you know.